Hugley goes to school. Please like and subscribe. Hugley was about to climb up and play in the people child's bedroom when Booter and Grubble found him. Hi, Hugley, said Booter. Come play hide and seek with us. Okay, said Hugley. Hey, Grubble, it's our turn to hide. Yeah, said Grubble. And guess what, Booter? You never win hide and seek. Until now, said Booter. Ready? She turned and covered her eyes. One, two, three. Hugly and Grubble scrambled away, zigzagging through a maze of caverns. Suddenly, Hugly stopped at a dark hole. This looks good. It's big enough for me, too, said Grubble. They climbed in and discovered a tunnel and dusty wooden steps. There was a hatch in the ceiling. They knew that hatches always opened up under people's beds. Let's look, said Hugly. They climbed up and peeked out from under the bed. What kind of place is this? Hugly asked. They saw strange furniture and several doors. Maybe they have slime pits here, said Grubble. Want to explore? I do if you do, said Hugly. Hugly opened a big jar of puffy white balls. Grubble found a clanky contraption. They both found boxes of sticky things. <laughs> Hugly opened one of the doors and cautiously stepped out into a long, empty tunnel. Suddenly, a bell rang overhead. Doors banged open somewhere, and they heard lots of people coming. We set off an alarm. We're going to get caught, thought Hugly. Let's get back under the bed, he cried. Just then, a big people person came through another door near the bed. Oh, no, we can't go that way, whispered Hugly. They hurried along the tunnel, looking for a hiding place. At that moment, a huge crowd of people children came around a corner. Hugly and Grubble ducked into a dim opening in the side of the tunnel. Ew, that was close, whispered Grubble. Hey, look at all this stuff, said Hugly. Hanging them around them were the things the people children wear. We could disguise ourselves until we get back under the bed. Hugly and Grubble weren't sure how to wear everything, but they did their best. <laughs> Gradually, the big tunnel grew quiet as the crowds of people children disappeared through different doorways. All clear, said Hugly. Let's go. They tiptoed back toward the room with the bed. But before they reached the door, a loud voice boomed from behind them. There you are! Hugly and Grubble froze in their tracks. Yikes, thought Hugly. Now we're caught for sure. I'm Principal Parley, a big people person said. I was expecting two new students tomorrow, but here you are today. Wasn't your mother bringing you? Hugly and Grubble were scared speechless. Oh, never mind. Let's go meet your teacher. Principal Parley led Hugly and Grubble to a noisy room. Have a nice day and do your best, she said, and left them with a teacher person named Mrs. Coburn. Look, boys and girls, said Mrs. Coburn, our two new students are here, just in time for math. Today, we'll practice counting to ten. Everyone counted on their fingers. Hugly and Grubble never made it to ten. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, class, Mrs. Coburn announced. Gather around for story time. The story was exciting, but Hugly and Grubble were the only ones who cheered when the cave monster flattened the village. <laughs> Next, 
It was time for art. Mrs. Coburn passed out paper and asked everyone to draw a picture of their mothers. <laughs> All day long, Hugly and Grubble had so much fun, they completely lost track of time. Finally, on their way back from the library, Hugly said, School is great, but maybe we should think about getting back home now. That's a good idea, said Grubble. They slipped past the classroom door and hurried down the big tunnel. Aha! There you are again! It was Principal Parley right behind them. I was correct. Your mother was supposed to bring you. And finally, here she is. I brought her to see your classroom. Hugly and Grubble were too afraid to move. A people mother would know they were not real children. Oh no, thought Hugly. Now we're really caught for sure. They slowly turned around to face her. Hello, children, Booter said in a high voice. The school day is nearly over. Why don't I just take you home now? Fine idea, said Principal Parley, waving goodbye. See you tomorrow, bright and early. Booter, Hugly, and Grubble hurried toward the room with the bed. But Principal Parley's voice stopped them again. You must be confused. The school's front door is right down the hall. My mistake, Booter mumbled. Uncertainly, she led Hugly and Grubble outside. They stood on the steps of the school and looked around. How do we get home without a bed? asked Grubble. I have no idea, said Booter. It took all my brain power just to find you two. Now we're in real trouble. Suddenly a bell rang. The doors behind them burst open and hundreds of children poured out of the school. I have an idea, said Hugly, pointing into the crowd. I recognize that people child. I played in his bedroom before. Let's just follow him home and climb under his bed. And they did. <laughs> Safely back in their own world again, Booter said, Guess what? What? asked Grubble and Hugly. I won hide and seek, she announced as she ran down the tunnel, laughing all the way. <laughs> well, I hope you like the story of Hugly going to school. I really like them. Hope we find some more to read sometime. I love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now. <laughs>